Good evening. Welcome back. So tonight we are going to unbox some packages. And we're going to go ahead and start with this one here. Yeah. Okay. We got some picks. Those are special ones. I'm not going to show you those right now. Word might get out to uh, who they're going to. So, we did get a Walker Williams leather strap. So, this is supposed to be. There's narrow one, two and a half inches, but that looks more like a three inch strap to me, in my opinion. Let's uh, get out the measuring stick, see what it says. Yeah, it's two and a half. That sure looks bigger than two and a half, don't it? Well, anyways, there it is. Smells really good. It smells like leather. It says it's padded, but just the sides feel squishy. I mean, that does too if you really push on it, but eh, it's a nice strap. I think that was like uh, 40 bucks or something like that. It wasn't too bad. My wife got that for me on Amazon. Same with these guitar picks. Let's see what we got here. I'm always afraid that I'm gonna cut into something. Hey, we got another package. Great. That just means they're trying to protect it. I think I know what this is now. I can feel it. Yep, I know exactly what this is. So, you guys know that I had said in one video that I found the 1979 uh, brown back plate, back plate covers uh, for the uh, silver burst because we're going to do this uh, 1979 vintage style. Well, I'd won the auction on those and the seller decided he didn't want to let them go for 49 bucks or whatever it ended up to be in. And he gave me some sob story and then he relisted them. So I went ahead and bid a whole bunch on it and then he just canceled my bid because he knew he didn't want to sell them. So hunting around, I found these. These are off of a robot guitar. Um, so you can see through them. They're transparent. So you can see the wiring. I'm not going to use it on the silver burst. Uh, and it came with a poker chip as well. I won these genuine Gibson parts, all of it, for six bucks. Free shipping. Can't beat that. So I'm going to put this over here in the plastic pile. I should actually wrap that up uh, so it doesn't scratch because they are transparent. So let's, let me stick uh, a couple Kleenexes on them there. Yeah, that's good enough for now. Let's see what else we got here. All right, just what I needed hair dye for my gray beard. No, actually it's my wife's. But she'll be happy that she got it. Okay. Lay's SIT uh, guitar strings. So 
The story behind these, if you guys watch my videos, you know I'm a big fan of Lay's Guitar Shop down there, the Loft, Lay's Loft in Akron, Ohio. Uh, the SIT strings are made here in America, made in Akron, Ohio, and they have a ton of different strings. Um, these ones here are branded Lay's. I specifically uh, sought out the part number because Lay's had given me, I see I got, I don't know, I probably, three packs in there. So Lay's, I bought a pack of these off of him, actually two, for this. So, and my Gold Top ES, my Les Paul ES, these are the strings that you want to use on semi-hollow body guitars. Um, there's a big difference between an acoustic uh, string and an electric guitar string. Well, I didn't know it, but there's a difference between a semi-hollow body, electric guitar, and a, uh, an acoustic guitar string. So these ones are specifically made for the middle of the road guitar here, which is a semi-hollow electric. So if you guys are out there playing semi-hollow bodies, it doesn't matter if it's a Les Paul 335, 345, 330, 339, whatever, 369, 345, blah, blah, blah. Uh, semi-hollow bodies use the SIT uh, power round nickel medium lights. Uh, they start off at a 011 or you can start off at a 015. It comes with two bottom E strings. So you can start with the 11 or the 15, but the rest are 20, 26, 36, and 50. So uh, just so you know, that's what those are for. They are semi hollow body. And you guys know I'm a big fan of the Dunlop guitar cleaner and waxes. This stuff is just amazing. This kit here comes with two polish cloths and two little wet sand papers. Uh, I got more of them in the little box underneath the camera right now, so I'm not going to dig those out because I have a total back stock of all this stuff. So if I start to run low on one, I just reach in there and grab another one. Again, big fan of that stuff. I got this. Uh, a gift for somebody so I'm not gonna open that you guys seen me use this enough of the uh, and you guys know what it's all about if not research it out the only other one that I recommend on top of this is the Dunlap Platinum series in which I talk about these all the time so all this product here um, and a few more that's not in here that I have over there of Dunlap I are Dunlop I use all this stuff on regular guitars. It's things that are used, that already have scratches, blemishes, stuff like that. Um, lightly used because this is more geared towards that kind of stuff, trying to uh, get the best shine you can out of an older guitar. Now when it comes to brand new guitars, which right at the moment, I don't have one. Uh, normally, I usually have one or two hanging on the rack, but uh, I don't right now. I've been buying a lot of vintage and old and used stuff, so no brand new ones. Hanging. Oh, wait. Oh, my God. Completely spaced out, but this isn't brand new. Um, this is a 2016 reissue, but it's the newest thing I have here. Uh, it's like brand new, so you would use the platinum stuff on it because it's not beat down. It's not full of scratches and... And that kind of stuff. But anyways, I'm going to get right to it because you guys are like, well, show me already. My God. So anyways, these are your Platinums. So you have the deep clean spray, which would be like your cleaner polish uh, down there in the orange. And then you have the spray wax, which would be like the Carnuba down there in the green. The only difference is this is a spray. That is a paste. These are really good for guitars that are already in immaculate condition. This would just throw that over the top shine on them and I don't waste them on uh, older guitars because they're still going to have blemishes on them. So, And that stuff's a lot more expensive. And then what we have here too is a 10 foot festival fender, 100% hemp uh, input cord or your patch cable, whatever you want to call it your instrument cable, or patch cable, uh, guitar cord, whatever. But anyways, this is also a gift 
uh, for somebody, and so are these picks. And that's why I'm not showing you the picks right now on the camera because uh, the person may be watching or somebody that knows him may be watching. So we're just going to leave that a mystery for a moment. So we have one more box here to open up. And I'll give you guys a hint of what it could be. Handle with care, fragile, thank you. And you see what is on there? A little Japanese girl holding a guitar. So while you guys are staring at that, I'm going to go ahead and cut my packing slip out on this side. Not to mention it has my address plastered all over it. So we'll just go ahead and get rid of that. And that don't have nothing on it. Neither does that. So let me finish cutting that off. All right, so we have a little Japanese girl holding a guitar. So this must be what I told you I was getting from Japan. And obviously it's a guitar. Or is it? Is it a case? Because this is an awful thin box. We're about to find out. When I do show you guys what I got, you are going to wonder why I bought it. Now, my dad told me he wanted me to save this sticker and I'm gonna have to cut through it in order to get this off. So, just go ahead and cut one out for him before I cut down the center of it to open this because I think this is a box wrapped around a box. All right, one Japanese handle with care sticker off. Might as well just get the other one off now too because I think, I think he had a good idea putting it in a frame, hanging it on a wall here in the guitar room for a decoration. So he'll be happy to get one because that's what he told me to do with one. And I said, yeah, I'll do that. And then when I looked at this box, it had one on each side and I thought, oh yeah, he'll want one. And I was just gonna leave them on and take them off later. But in order to get this box open, I have to cut down the center here. And this is right dead smack in the way. All right, there's the second one. They actually, they printed this on a, on a really high gloss, like waterproof paper almost. So kind of neat. All right, so here we go. Try to get this open one more time here. Oh no, look at that. So when I bought this guitar, I asked them, I said, does it come in a case? And they said, no, but we'll hook you up with a case. <laughs> and I kind of figured this is what was gonna happen. <laughs> Look at this case, this thing is terrible. I was hoping to at least get one of the, the cheap black Gibson gig bags. But nope, I got a, what is this? Ritter Classic. I don't know. If you're going camping, uh, I guess you uh, have somewhere to put your water life straws and your waterproof matches and all that kind of stuff. And if it rains too much and your campfire won't go, you'll have a guitar to burn. Yeah, so there's lots of pockets in here for some reason or another. Um, I'm not sure who would load up a guitar pack like a backpack, but I think he even got a, a spot here for one of them old flip phones. Yeah. Hey, at least they sent it in, a, in something. It came all the way from Japan. So you guys are probably wondering what's in it. Uh, 
I might as well show you. Now again, you guys are going to say, well, why did you buy that from Japan? Oh, it's even missing a zipper pull. Because there's tons of these everywhere you go. You can walk into Sam Ash and Guitar Center. Yeah, that's right. You can get these just about anywhere. But there's a reason that I bought this one. And I will soon show you guys as soon as I can get it out. And unwrap it again. That's not going to stay, but I don't care. So, I was kind of hoping it wasn't wrapped up like this so I could show you immediately, but hey, at least they took the time to try to protect it, right? So what do I have here? Cherry Studio. You're like, well, what's so special about a Cherry Studio? Well, I've always liked the cherries. They're, they've always caught my eye every time I've walked into Guitar Center or Sam Ash or anything like that. I've always, I've always liked the, I don't know, the plainness, the simple Cherry Studios. Um, they just look good. But here's what's really cool about this. So. Any studio that you see here in America, they all have chrome pickup covers. Uh, usually the knobs are a little different. And anyways, this one in particular are usually always made with a mahogany neck. This one must have been a special order from Japan because it has a flame maple neck on it. So not your typical mahogany neck like every other studio cherry has. This one has a really nice figured neck. And I actually like it better in person than I did in the photos. I mean, it has, it's really hard to translate onto the camera, but this neck is just super flamed out. And again, like I said, most all the studios, I've looked far and wide and I spent two days sweating whether if I should buy this or not because there was a lot of people watching it um, and I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't something that I could just get here later but indeed I had did not find any here in America um, that didn't have a mahogany neck on it and this one had the the flame to maple neck. So I'm like, well, I gotta have that. I went back and forth with the guy and uh, I got him down on the price because he didn't wanna give it with a case and shipping and blah, blah, blah. Well, long story short too, he thought there was import, and import fees and all that. Let's take a look at this back. It's got some really nice figuring in it too for mahogany back. So this has the maple cap on it, two piece. You can see the line there. I think that looks pretty cool how it's darker there than it is here. Some people probably frown on that, but that was another one of the things that I liked about it when you looked at it in the pictures, <laughs> how it had those two distinctively different colors. Um, but yeah, so that neck though, wow. I looked all over though for uh, for one with a maple neck and most all of them every single one that I would come across it was mahogany 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 so again long story short I worked out something with this guy and got him to at least throw in a crappy little gig bag to get it here it's in really good shape I don't see any um, any indentations in any of the frets this was sold as used. Uh, I'm thinking it was just a floor model. Uh, the guitar store that I bought this from, he literally has hundreds of guitars uh, on his eBay site. 
and he has so many that I got tired of looking at them. I, I didn't even make it to the end of them. So I knew he was reputable. I looked at his feedback and everything. So I was pretty confident I was going to get what they said I was getting. Yeah, everything's cool. So anyhow, that's it. That's what I ordered from Japan. And I think this is a 17. Yeah, this is a 2017. And it's a Cherry Studio with a flame maple neck. So as I was thinking about it, I, I tore apart. I haven't posted that video yet, but I tore apart the 2017 Gold Top Tribute. Um, that was kind of a disaster. Just wait to go back to those videos and you'll see why. But I was thinking, I'm pretty sure this is gonna have a PCB board in it too as well. And if it does, this has the 490R, 490T pickups in it. So did my Gold Top Tribute. These ones are chrome though. So I was thinking, of doing a pickup swap as long as it has the PCB board in it where I can just plug them in. I'm not going to use these in the Tribute no more. So I might jazz this up a little bit and put the Chrome 490R, 490Ts in it. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick peek right now and see if indeed this has a PCB board in it or not. Uh, if it doesn't, it'd be the first time I was bummed out about having a guitar without a PCB board in it. Because I just hate those things. You on board with me? You don't like them either? No? No? Alright. Almost. Bear with me. Last screw here. Wow, they probably even heard that. It was like a rain of dookie. What an awful thing to have on film. <laughs> That's awful, you guys. How many more poops are on my back? That's yucky. Just took a dump right on the table. And then I know you're going for a flight. Come on. And there goes big head. Timmy's on my head now. Ah, oh, this is too much. <sighs> Timmy landed in the bucket. See what you get for taking off? Huh? Here, just get down there and play. All right, sorry about that. So indeed, it does have a PCB board. So we are going to do a pickup swap in this. Uh, I'm not gonna do it right now, because I wanna test it, but it indeed has the same exact PCB board as the, uh, the Tribute did, so. That's what it looks like, and actually it goes like this, but right there. So there's what's inside of it. So we're gonna go ahead and put the chrome pickups in it. I think that'll look a lot better. Obviously, I'm gonna take the cream rings off of it and uh, put the black ones on. But I think that'll look, I think that'll look a whole lot better in there with the chrome on it because it is so plain. It just needs a little bit something extra. So we will definitely put the chrome pickups in it. I think that will look good, especially since I'm not using them in the, the Tribute Gold Top. We'll go ahead and use them in here. It'll be like an upgrade for this. And I'm gonna go ahead and search down a case for it. I actually need a few cases now. I've been on a hunt. There was tons of cases available this last few months or a few months ago and now trying to find a case is next to impossible. And if you do find them, they want way too much money for them. 
So I've been kind of just holding out on buying cases at the moment. But once I do get this a case and I switch the pickups and get it cleaned up and I make sure everything works and everything, and we will uh, put it up for sale. So stay tuned. Keep watch on my reverb page. Every one of my videos, I always have a link to my reverb page down in the bottom. So you can go there. Um, not everything is listed right now. Um, I have quite a few things that I'm either working on or I need to get other things for. Yada, yada, yada. So uh, I think I got four guitars that aren't listed and a couple amplifiers. So not, not too much, but... Um, if you guys are interested in this, just uh, let me know, but it's going to be for sale after I get the case and I switch the pickups in it. So maybe we'll find something else that we can uh, use the open face pickups in. But that's it. That's my uh, unboxing video slash mini new toy from Japan. Let's go ahead and take one more look at this neck. I just love this neck. This neck is just awesome super flamed out maple neck on a studio flame maple neck on a studio when normally they're always mahogany and then it's got this funky two-piece maple top and i like how that color varies from side to side like that uh, there's actually a custom shop that has a really dark it was a three piece and it has a really dark side on it and uh, it's a really sought after guitar i can't remember whose guitar it was but uh i just remember that that funky that funky discoloration on the front of it so anyways that's the uh japanese uh score there now i just heard my phone going off and the crazy thing is my phone shouldn't even be working. This is what happens when your wife leaves your phone on the back of your car and then leaves. And this was in an otter box, just like this one. Super, super strong, protective otter box. And what had happened is she left my shop. She'd put this on the back of the car she drove to Taco Bell, which was about five miles, six miles down the road. And then she made it another seven or eight miles before it fell off. And then when she got home, I said, do you have my phone? And she says, no. And then she got back in the car and left. And I'm like, oh, it's not going to come back. We're not going to find it. And then she called and she says, hey. I looked all over, I can't find it. See if you can do the find my phone. So I downloaded the find my phone app on her phone because we both have the 5G S20 Ultras. And it pinpointed right where it was. Now had this been any more broken, there's no way, if it, if it wouldn't have had power, it wouldn't have did the find my phone app. But uh, it, it's powered up, I keep it charged until I get my new one just in case I got to transfer data. They say it would go by the Gmail account or whatever, but I'm skeptical. But um, yeah, so this was obviously ran over. You can tell by all the, the gravel spots from it being smashed into the road, but you can see the aluminum frame. That's the only metal part of the whole phone is just this real thin frame around here. And the rest of it's glass. Now I had broke the camera lens uh, prior to this and had it replaced and it, it survived it. And that's probably because of the, the otter box. This was in the otter box. It was probably laying face down. It got runned over. Thus all the gravel spots in the, the face of it. And when it got run over, it popped the otter box off of it. But yeah, so that's what one looks like that uh, has been run over by a, a car. I fell off of a car doing probably 45 mile an hour and then run over by a car only God knows how many times. But um, yeah, so there's a 5G S20 Ultra 
that has got a squishy from an automobile. And amazingly, it still works. Although though, you can't, that's all you'll get is just that flash. You can't see nothing, but at a ring, I can hear my text is coming in. I can hear eBay notifications, reverb notifications, because I have different sounds for all those. So I know exactly what's going on. I just can't see it. I don't know what's, uh, what they're saying or who called or who texted. And yesterday I was supposed to have my new one, um, but we were splitting wood, so I missed that. And we figured they'd try to re-deliver it today. And nope, they got it scheduled for tomorrow. So I get to wait another day to get a new phone. So don't let your wife leave the house with your phone on the back of the car. Uh, you might not get as lucky as I did and be able to find it. Because you do have to return something when you file an insurance claim. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time.